Welcome everyone to Maximum Golf 101. In section two or lesson two of this 12 week uh, program, uh, we talked a little bit mainly about the setup, how we set our mind and our body up to our specific target, uh, the procedures that we went through, and now we're gonna get into some of the motions uh, in the backswing. But before we do the beginning motions of the backswing, we do have to talk about the grip. The grip was one of the most important uh, attributes of, of Hogan's um, understanding and utilization of the golf swing. With his uh, principles, he needed to understand the connection to the golf club. And he perfected it to a point whereby he disabled the left side and he strengthened or made more powerful the right side just in the grip. So uh, we're gonna go quickly go over the grip mainly because in my teaching what I found with a lot of people is they don't wanna mess with their grip. Their, their grip just destroys their game. Uh, they have a hard time doing uh, some of the uh, maneuvers with the hands and feeling them in the golf swing. So what I always would tell people is just grip the club like you normally would. We'll get the body and the rest of the machine to work as a unit and work properly. And if you have that strong grip, which typically people have, then the ball is going to start to go left. You're going to start hooking it. You're going to start making um, wild snap hooks or even just a bigger draw than you uh, have uh, anticipated uh, with this swing. So with that, then you can start tweaking your grip. So, but I'm going to give you the, the version that John was given uh, by Hogan. And this version actually shows the left hand grip very weak. And a lot of people call this a weak grip, but what I like to call it is a proper grip. All right? Because like I said before, it disables the left hand and enables more of a, uh, a, a stronger, uh, more useful right hand in the swing. Okay? So, um, the first thing you want to do when you get the, the club, and John always talked about it, was to put your left arm out and the club and your left arm will be at a perpendicular angle. This is where I use my practice club at home a lot when I'm practicing because it does have that perfect grip on it. It does have a club face and it's got a little shaft. And what it does is enables me to feel what I would normally put on my golf, um, in my golf swing on the golf club, but not have that long club about. So, first off, what, what you have to understand is John wanted the club to be more in the fingers. He said that Hogan showed him to roll the club in because the pads, these callus pads, right in between the fingers and the palm, will secure the club in your hand without squeezing really, really tight. So he was showing John that it, the best way to adhere to that and to do that is to get it in the fingers as much as possible and then just roll it in, all right? Next, what you would do is once you do that, instead of having the real long thumb, because in the backswing, if you have a real long thumb, the club can get a little bit disoriented and wobble a little bit more than if you push uh, or if you pull back the thumb slightly to give yourself that better connection with the thumb as well. Now, when you do that, when you roll in and, and push and pull down on the thumb, it's going to create a little, slight little bit of a diagonal in your hand. Okay? That's where the pad of the palm will then rest on the club as well, okay? So, once you've got that secure and pulled down, you can then adjust your club face to that point, all right? 
One other thing that John wanted to make sure of is that the back of the left hand and the back of the forearm are in line, okay? If you have a cup in the back of your left hand, that will create a hinge on the way back that is not wanted at address. And we'll get into that when we're going through more of the swing. But for right now, by creating the back of the left hand and the back of the forearm in line, we have disabled that power cup in the back of the left wrist at this point. All right. Next, we are then going to put our right hand on the club. We're going to put the little pinky, the little finger, the pinky in between the forefinger and the middle finger of the left hand. We are then going to put the club shaft, the grip, in our fingers as well. And at this point, we're going to have the right hand then go over the left thumb and it, the left thumb will fit right in your hand, uh, the middle part of your palm very well, okay? From this point, we then make sure that the thumb and index finger will touch and you have a grip whereby the V's formed by the thumb and index finger of each hand will go to your left shoulder for a right-handed golfer. All right? So, at this point, you have a perfect grip. One that Hogan said could control your club head the best. All right? Now, one other thing that was important was the grip pressure. Um, a lot of times when people are working on their grip, they grip it really tight or they're getting in a situation where they want to hit a shot and that shot uh, causes a lot of pressure, a lot of tension and they uh, transcribe it into their grip whereby they disable a lot of their uh, loose muscles and uh, consequently don't hit the shot that they want to hit. So what John would always help his students with is the grip pressure and how he did that was to say well take your take your grip and then grip it as tight as you can and that grip will be a 10 okay and let it loosen after that to the point where it would be a three that's what he felt was the optimum grip pressure at address all right, is a three. So when you go really tight, go really soft to a point where you think that your grip pressure is about a three. And this is where you can just almost barely pull the club out of your hands. All right, so I add address, you will have this grip pressure, perfect grip, and then proceed into your setup. All right, so the grip, remember, checkpoints for the grip, making sure that the thumb and index finger of the left hand is pointed to the left shoulder, back of the left hand is in line with the back of the forearm. The grip is in the fingers, all right? Make sure that's in the fingers. It's gonna feel like the right hand is on top of the club. We'll get into that because as you're going through the hitting area, you want to feel a wiping motion with that right hand. With the uh, right hand on top of the club, you are going to be able to feel that so much better. So, a perfect grip will have the back of the left hand and the back of the forearm in line and a cup. When we talk about a cup, it's like a hinge in the back of the right wrist. All right, so, Take care with that in uh, lesson three. Lesson four, we are going to get into the wrist cock and the shoulder turn on the way back. All right, because those are actions that are very, very important. So practice your grip, constantly look at it. I don't know if you ever see any of the tour players on tour. Um, some of the older fellows, uh, just like Jim Furyk, he would meticulously place his hands on the club every single time. 
he was out there. If you ever followed him or watched him on TV, a lot of the younger guys are adhering to that as well. But um, it's something that is very, very, very important. So till next time, keep practicing your grip.